Hello and welcome back to the Scratch series of Girls Coded Academy. This is Juliet and today we're going to add on to more of what we learned last time in Mad Libs. We're going to learn if-else blocks, more about variables and operators, and you know, use ask blocks again to create a quiz game. So because this is a new project, we're going to create and scratch a new program project. And we're going to name it Quiz Game. Go over here, Quiz Game. And mine will be a geography quiz with only three questions just to show you how each of them work. But you guys can do whatever topic you want and make as many questions as you want. So first things first, of course, we need to choose our sprite and our background. So I'm not going to use Scratchy today. Um, and I'm going to add a new sprite. And I'm going to use the dinosaur because I think it's so cute. Put it over here. I'm going to add a backdrop. And think of where a dinosaur likes to live. Um, maybe the forest? No. Jurassic. I feel like that's perfect. Perfectly made for a dinosaur. Okay, let's go over to the dinosaur. And my quiz questions are three types. A free response question, multiple choice, and true-false. Just to show you one of each type of question you can use in your quiz game. So first I'm going to drag out the one green flag is clicked. And I'm going to greet the user. So, hello, welcome to my geography quiz game. Okay, and next I'm gonna ask my first question. So go over to sensing, we're gonna to go to ask. My first question is, what is the capital of California? And now what we're going to use is something called the if-else block. So under control, we're going to use an if-else block. And we're going to learn more about operators right now. And so basically we're going to pull out an operator, an equal sign. Because we want to basically say if the answer is equal to the right answer, then say you're correct. Otherwise, say you're incorrect. So... I'm going to say the answer is Sacramento. Sacramento. I'm going to pull out under sensing the answer block again. Put it right in there. And when uh, it is correct, I want my dinosaur to say, you are correct. And I want him to play a sound. So I'm going to go over to sounds. Go over to choose a sound. And I'm going to search the ta-da sound. Go back to the code. I'm going to have my dinosaur play the sound, ta-da, until done. On the other hand, if he is incorrect, I'm going to copy it over here and say, you are incorrect. And I'm going to add a new sound to play when it's incorrect. Let's pick one. Maybe a bomb. It's like a bonk is a good sound to show you are incorrect. A bonk. So let's see what this means. Just this little one question. And press the green flag. He'll say, hello, welcome to my quiz game. Capital of California, if I get it correct. Sacramento. And it will play ta-da. On the other hand, if it is incorrect, which I'll show you right now. Um. I'll put a wrong city, San Francisco. I'm so bad at spelling. So if I'm bad at, if this isn't the right spelling, look up the right spelling. Um, but incorrect, and now it's gonna play the boink sound. Okay, so that's the first question of my quiz. Now I'm gonna repeat the same thing again for my second question, only this time it'll be multiple choice. So I'm just going to right click from the ask, duplicate, and just put it right underneath. My next question is, what is the capital of Germany? But I'm gonna put letters for multiple choice. So A will be Munich, B will be Berlin, and C, oh, I forgot the Y in Germany, Germany, and C 
will be Frankfurt. So if the answer is B, it'll be you are correct and I'll play ta-da. If you're incorrect, it'll do the same. So let's see what that means. So, so I'll put the right answer. And now when I enter the so these, it'll show three options. So I, I wanna enter the corresponding letter. So it'll be A, B, or C. So let's say I get it wrong. And I'll do the same thing, incorrect or correct. Now for my last question I'm gonna show you will be a true false. So I'm gonna put that right there and I'm gonna delete all of it and I'm gonna put true false and it's followed by a statement. Mad Madrid is the capital of capital of Spain. Ah. And the correct answer is true. So if they enter a T, they're correct. If they're incorrect, it'll be a bonk. So now we have all three types of questions shown with the if else block. And one thing we can add now is a score. So I can go over to variables. I'm going to make a variable called score. Okay. And then I'll show on the top. And I want to set it initially equal to zero. So we're going to set score to zero. That's because if we play a lot of times, the score will keep getting bigger and it'll never reset back to zero. So each new game will just be consecutive amount of points instead of resetting back to zero. So every time they get a right answer, I want to increase the score by one. So I'm going to click on score. I'm going to increase, whenever time they get it right, I'm going to change score by one. So I'll go under each correct answer area. I just want to set, I want to change the score by one. Let's see how that works. So we're going to be welcome to the geography quiz. Palpa California will be Sacramento. And see now my score now is one. And then I'll do a wrong answer. And my score remains one. And get this one right. My score is now two. So you can see how many they're right like that. And now at the end of the game, I want to have different uh, actions for each score. So what we're gonna do then is pull out another if else block. So first I'm gonna have him say game over, just so we can distinguish. So I'm gonna pull out another if else. So if, go over here, the score is a full score. We get all three questions right. I want him to say, you got all three questions right. And then within here, we can nest other if else statements within it for each score, two, one, and zero, or for just two and one and zero. So I'm gonna go over to here, pull out another if else and nest it right in there. So same thing, we're gonna just copy this, right click, put it here, if score equals zero, it means we got none right. We're gonna say you got all questions wrong. Sorry, I'll stop that. You got all three questions wrong. And over here it's else. So if it is not all three right and not all three wrong, it'll result here, which will be you got one, two, right. One or two right. So I'll say you did good. Keep studying. So that's how we can use if else to represent the score. So like again, here, if the score is three, it'll say you got all three questions correct. Else, it'll go in here. Now, if the score is zero, you got all three questions wrong. Else, otherwise, it'll say you, got, you did good, keep studying. But if the score is three, it'll just go here and it won't go back. It won't do these other actions. At the end, I just want him to dance in his costumes. So we just want him to be silly in his costumes. So I'm just going to create a 
forever loop where he just switches costumes. So I'm just gonna pull out the next costume, which is just the next costume. I always have it loop, just so we can see that it'll, it will get there. So now we did a lot, let's just go over everything again and run it. Capital California, Sacramento. My score is one. Do B for Berlin. True. And because I got all three right, it'll go here, here, and then it'll start dancing. Whoa. Well, he danced way too fast. I'm gonna put in a weight block. <laughs> that was kind of spasmy. But you see now that it, it only said the three questions correct because my score was three. Now let's see it again with a question one, one or two scores, right? So we get to this block. So I'll do um, Los Angeles. So we see how it ended up in this block because the score was not equal to zero and the score was not equal to three. And it just says this and then leaves not only this inner if else, but the outer if else to go dance in his costumes. And this can, you don't have to put this. I just wanted to show you this as an example of that it does only do this and it leaves both of these nested blocks to get to the, the dancing. Okay. Now we're just going to add a sound for the background that plays while the quiz goes on. And I think we finished our quiz game. So I'm going to go in, add a sound, go to loops, and let's do drum jam. And like we always do, uh, when it's clicked, we're going to play the sound until done. We're going to put drum jam and have it repeat forever. Okay. Oop, let's put it around it. And now let's see what happens in full screen. It's going to reset to zero also. You'll see that. I hope this video helped explain if else, bo if else blocks, um, variables with the score, understand operators we can use with if else, and further our understanding of the ask blocks. I hope this helps you create your own quiz game with different types of questions like true, false, free response, and multiple choice. And I will see you next video for a new project. Great job, guys. Hey, it's Juliet from Girls Code and Academy. If you liked what you saw today, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what else you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.